Kate of the Brooklyn Knit Folk Podcast. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry is at Jacqueline Salem. I'm a graphic designer who lives in Brooklyn, New York City with her two cats and roommate and wonderful friends and everything that this amazing city has to offer me. Thank you so much for all returning viewers who are coming back to watch the podcast. And if you're just checking me out for the first time, welcome. I hope you like what you see. Um, sometimes this podcast is fraught with cats that run around. So if you like that, great. If not, sorry, nothing I can do about it. They're a little crazy. So I have a two-pager today, but I thought I didn't really have a whole lot to talk about. But we'll see how long it takes for us to get through these things. Um, the first thing I wanted to mention is that show notes for the podcast are always posted in the down bar below. A lot of you guys have really mentioned that I give really detailed and great show notes, so I'm glad that you guys use them. That's awesome. But now the show notes will, in addition to the down bar, be posted in a Ravelry group! Yay! Yay! So by popular demand, I have finally made a Ravelry group. I guess I was resisting it for a while because I just didn't know what I would be doing that was different than what I can already give you guys via Instagram and um, just the show notes below. I'm still not 100% sure what's going to be different from the Ravelry, but enough people have asked about it that I thought I would go ahead and do it. And since I'm uh, hosting, co-hosting my first knit along, I thought it would be a good opportunity to go ahead and set that up. So I have done that. So if you just search Brooklyn Knit Folk on Ravelry, you should be able to find it. Thank you to the few people who have already joined before I've even said anything about it that's awesome and exciting that you guys care enough to search about it on Ravelry. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was thank you so much to all the podcasters who have mentioned me recently. Your support for Brooklyn at Folk means the world to me, but especially to the people who get in touch with me and leave comments and um, message me on Ravelry and comments on the YouTube uh, comments and in Instagram. like. It is just so much fun interacting with everybody and seeing what everybody else is doing because I love and get so inspired by the stuff that you guys make too. I think we all do that. So can't always be browsing till 3 in the morning for Ravelry patterns, which I do, but what have you. Um, a few podcasts. Sorry, I'm looking at the notes below because... I'm a little bit scattered right now. I do have a friend visiting me in town. Her name is Tracy. She's one of my best friends. And um, I don't have like a whole lot of progress on projects right now because we've just been running around New York doing all the fun stuff. So I'm a little bit scattered and all over the place right now. So sorry for that. But a few podcasts that I wanted to mention. Um, these are my, it's always changing probably slightly, but they're these three that I'm sure you've heard of at least two of them. Um, but that if it's if I see an episode has been uploaded, I will like cannot focus until I go and watch it because I'm just so interested in what these ladies are doing and making. So the first one, Little Bobbins Knits with Danny. Obviously, I'm sure all of you have heard of this, but if for some reason you are living under a rock, go subscribe immediately and check her out. Like again, this just feels silly even mentioning this because I'm sure everybody has heard of her, but she is wonderful. She's so talented and what's the best way to describe it? I'm just like so in awe of her dedication to craft and not like actual making so much as like her dedication to making things look really perfect and going back and fixing things or her abil her ability to even remake the same pattern. She's just very um, respectable and admirable to me because of her her dedication to craft and making things look, you know, amazing and perfect. So no pressure on her for that or anything like that because that's definitely not my style. To me, I'm much more done is better than perfect, but I really admire her dedication to craft. She's also a really wonderful sewist and the things that she puts in her shop just have so much love in them and someday I really want to own a Little Bobbins bag or especially a DPN needle case. I think those are really cool. The other uh, two, the second one is Isabel of the Fluffy Fiber Fluffy Fibers podcast. She's a uh, French podcaster who podcasts in English and she, my favorite thing about her is the diversity of the crafts that she talks about. She does spinning, sewing, knitting. She's just like an all over craftress. And 
I really love her pattern and yarn choices. They're very different from my color choices, but I love, I still love and appreciate her aesthetic. So her podcast is wonderful. She recently announced that she's pregnant with her second child, which is so exciting. And I love all the things that she makes for her daughter. It's just a really inspiring podcast and one that I just have to like rush to listen to whenever a new one's up. And the third one, I've mentioned this before, but I'm just going to promote it again because I love it so much, is Sarah of the Yarns at Yin Hu podcast. She's an audio podcast. Um, it's on YouTube, or YouTunes, iTunes, and also on her blog. You can listen through it on her website. But it's just such a wonderful podcast if you are interested in, like, slow down movement and, like, maker movement, um, cooking, and just kind of like a... It's more like a perspective on life, but with a focus on knitting. Like, don't be, you know, don't be surprised. Like, there is knitting and stuff in it, but it's just, it's so much more than that to me, and I just, I really enjoy it. So that was Sarah at Yarns at Yin Hu. Again, all of this information will be in the down bar below and also in the show notes on Ravelry. And then a new one to me, which, again, in case you haven't been living under a rock, um, Katie from the... Uh, Inside Number 23 podcast. Such a joy to watch. I love her aesthetic also. The sewing and um, her knitting projects, they're just, they're just wonderful. She's just such a sweet and funny person. She also really loves Harry Potter, so if you love Harry Potter like I do and like everyone should, then you'll love her podcast. She's just, yeah, she's doing lots of fun stuff too on her podcast, so if you, again, haven't heard of her, go check it out. So, in light of mentioning Katie, though, this is a perfect segue. A lot of podcasters have been mentioning what their um, what their house is for their Hogwarts house would be, and I thought it would be fun to just like join in and share mine because it might be an unpopular one with the knitters, and I'm guessing you could already see where I'm going with this. I knew what house I was going to be sorted in before I even took the test, and you know what? No shame. Say it loud, say it proud. Slytherin! <laughs> That's me. But you know what? It doesn't mean I'm a Draco Malfoy, okay? Like, we can still be ambitious and resourceful and, you know, clever. It's just, you know, there's lots of other good things about Slytherin, so if you're a fellow Slytherin, join. You know, we can just be our Slytherin, slytherin this together. So, that's me. Hey guys, my name is Jacqueline, and I'm a Slytherin. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the Fine and Dandy Socks Cal that uh, myself and Amber from the Yarn Junkie podcast will be hosting. I first saw the Fine and Dandy Socks pattern on Laura of the Fawn Knits podcast. Hers were gorgeous. I saw them on her podcast and saw pictures on her Instagram feed, and I fell in love with the sock pattern. I still have not made any socks yet, so this is going to be a pattern sock for my first sock, but you know, we're going to go with it. It's going to be fine. Um, <laughs> so... The Fine and Dandy Socks, a pattern by The Sweater Co. She's The Sweater Co. on Instagram and on Ravelry. Again, don't feel like you have to rush to write any of this down. It will all be in the show notes so you can go back and reference later. The pattern is one Australian dollar, which is 73 cents on Ravelry. So don't feel like you're breaking the bank with this one because it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. I myself will be giving away um, three copies of the pattern on my Instagram. So if you'll check back after you've watched the episode, I'm sure I'll have the post up, or if not now, sorry, fuzz. If it's not up now, it will be in the next day or so. And then for this week, I'll close the thread at the end of the week and go ahead and give away three copies of the pattern for, you know, three winners through the Instagram post. So that's coming up. Um, we have decided, originally we were gonna start the knit along on April 1st. But we've decided that we're going to start it on St. Patrick's Day now, since the pattern's already released. So that will be on March 17th is when the knit along will start. The hashtag will be Fine and Dandy Cal. So you can post pictures of your progress or your finished objects. Um, of course, I'll open up a finished objects thread on Ravelry too. Um, there will be at least a couple prizes for the finished objects. And yeah, I'm really excited to make them. I think. I bought this yarn a while ago. It's a Plymouth yarn, I think. I can't remember. 
me see if I can check out the card here. Plymouth, oh no, Cascade, okay. Cascade Heritage Hand Painted yarn. And it's this purple with flecks of gold running through it. It's a really beautiful color. My only concern is that um, it's not going to show off the pattern to its full potential. I'm thinking I maybe need to use a lighter color. I personally prefer darker colors. It's more my taste, but I think that this pattern will look a lot better in a lighter color yarn. So I haven't 100% decided, but I'm thinking right now it will be this Cascade Heritage. So really loving that. Um, Anything else I want to mention about the fine and dandy cow? Oh, and you know, I'm sure like uh, we're doing it through April 30th. That's when it will end. So you guys, I know a ton of you guys are making socks for Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast, Box O Socks Cow. So you could, you know, think about making these for your April socks if you wanted to. So double dipping in different knit alongs. All right, I think that's all for admin stuff. So let's move into finished objects. You may have noticed that I'm wearing a shawl right now, and that's because my Sirma shawl, it's done! Oh my gosh, you guys, I never thought this day was going to come. This has taken up most of my knitting time in the past couple weeks. I didn't think I was going to finish it in February. I thought I was going to, I was using the finish it in February and craft for 20 to make progress on it. But I didn't think I was actually going to finish it in February. I just wanted to make progress. But as I was getting closer, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to power through. I'm going to get it done. This has been on the needle since September, you guys. September. It's made in Woolen Vine Yarns in Gashley Creme on her Volca base, which is the MCN. It's huge. Way bigger than my wingspan. I don't even think I can fit it in the whole frame. It is really lovely. I do take a few issues with the pattern. Um, I really am enjoying the finished object, but in retrospect, I started this, again, this was my first ever shawl that I cast on. Not the first one that I finished, but the first one I cast on. And in retrospect, let's see if I can show you here. There is like this raining stars pattern, but it's really hard to see with the variegated yarn. So this yarn was probably not the best selection for this shawl because it's hard to see the pattern, but it is so soft. Kristen's yarns are just wonderful. This took about one and a half skeins and I kind of cheated. The garter tab on the edge was probably meant to have about 10 more rows on that, but I just, I couldn't keep going, you know? I was just like, I was so over it, I was beyond over it. So I just capped it off. It's still huge, again, still bigger than my wingspan. And I love it. It's really cozy and comfortable. I cast this on to be my office shawl at work um, because it gets cold in my office. And I've just kind of taken to wearing it like this. See, the bottom of it goes all the way down to my booty. It's just really comfortable. It's just so nice to wrap myself up in. Um, it was knit on size five high highs. What's that in millimeter? 3.75 millimeter. And I am have to say I am happy to have my high highs back because for some reason a lot of patterns for shawls that I want to make are in fives. So I'm happy to finally have those free, be able to do what I want. Again, it was like raining stars pattern. There was a lot of counting involved in this, and the pattern had no row counts in the entire thing. So if you made a mistake, the pattern, excuse me, was written in such a way that it was really difficult to see if you've made a mistake until you had gotten to another textured row when you had to do a lot of counting again, and then you saw that you were off. So my suggestion, suggestion to the pattern designer, which will be in the show notes because it's a French name that I have no interest in butchering, um, she, I would really wish that she would add row counts to it. It would just have made it so much more helpful along the way. I can't exactly say, I mean, I, again, I'm glad to have the finished object. I love the yarn, although the yarn was not really well suited for this project. But I do have to say that if you're going to knit this, definitely knit it in something tonal or solid. And you have to really like the pattern because I do think that there were a couple flaws with the way that it was written. Again, no row counts. It was just not 
designed in such a way that made it easy to kind of read through the pattern. You'll see if you purchase it. But if you really, if you like it, just really, really like it. I wouldn't say that I would recommend it to everybody. It's just, yeah. I'm happy that it's done, but yeah. Moving on to other projects, you know? Which gets me to my whips. First one I want to talk about is like my favorite project of all time. I'm just going to keep going on and on about this, you guys, because it is the perfect mixture of pattern with yarn with tools. Literally my favorite needles, first of all, Addy Turbo Lace needles, favorite ones. The pattern is lovely. It's like this diamond geometric. I've only made one uh, re pattern repeat of progress on it, so I've only gotten that much more done. But got my unicorn stitch marker. I think it was appropriate. Just like a magical fairy project. This diamond pattern that's kind of like garter in the top and stuck in it in the bottom and then some left and right uh, twist to make the diamond shape pattern. It's so lovely. The yarn Wolfolk Far, which is their worsted weight base in colorway number two. It's like a soft smoke or not smoke, just kind of a soft gray color with like a purplish tinge to it. This is just lovely. I've talked on and on about it. I won't make you guys listen to a ton of poetry about it anymore, but just let me tell you, perfect pairing of yarn with pattern. Wolfolk Far yarn with the Void Shawl. Just lovely. So yeah, one pattern repeat, not too much. But every time I pick this up, it's just a treat to work on. I can't wait. It's my favorite project I've ever done by far, so far. C'est magnifique. <laughs> that was weird, sorry. And while we're on the subject of the wolf folk yarn, my friend Hannah from Circus Tonic Handmade, she's so talented, first of all. Her yarns are just gorgeous. I did a giveaway with her on episode five, and she dyes based on Australian nature. So her yarn has like this familiar but beautiful resonating with me theme to it. It's just really, it's just lovely. Aside from her yarn though, she's just a wonderful person. She's so sweet and kind and just really fun. I, I really love her. Came home from work one day to a package from Pearl Soho. I was like, I didn't order anything from Pearl Soho. How did, like, what is this for? And I opened it and found two skeins of yarn I'm using for this project from Hannah, gifted from, from her. Thank you so much, Hannah. I definitely teared up when I opened the package, and I am not a crier, Slytherin, as you know. But um, I just, like, I was so touched, beyond touched at this generosity. I, I couldn't believe it. The yarn is, like, a little bit pricey, so I had to decide I was kind of buying it in stages, like, as I needed it. And so now I have the rest of the yarn for the project. And I just like could not, I could not be more grateful or thankful, Hannah. Thank you so much. So got a little bit of acquisitions in there, but relevant to the shawl. And then my last work in progress is the Deschutes sweater by Noragon. Not getting bored with it yet, but it is a more simple pattern. So it's good for like those on the go type of things or when I'm wanting to work on more simple patterns. But to be honest, I've recently, I guess with the Wolf Folk shawl, I have, um, or Void shawl in the Wolf Folk yarn, I've been wanting to knit something with that's a little more complicated. It's just kind of what I'm in the mood for. So I've been working on that more than this, but this is the back of the Deschutes sweater. It's knit in Cascade 220 worsted heathers in the walnut colorway. And this is the progress I've made on the front part. So I'm at the armhole decreases now. So the next rows will be the armhole decreases. So not a ton, you know, doubled it, I guess, since the last time you've seen it. But I'm really enjoying the color of this. Oh, that's the back. I love the texture of the sweater. I can't wait to wear it. That's the yarn caked up. 
The yarn is not my favorite. I'm not sure that I'll purchase this again, honestly. I think also it's a problem just working on this while I'm using the Woolfolk yarn because this is cloud. This feels like scratchy tree bark in comparison. So it's probably not fair to the Cascade, sorry, not fair to it that I'm working on a Woolfolk project right now because it makes this not feel like even more intensely not as great. It's definitely great workhorse yarn. It's, it's very cost effective, so I can't say I'll never use it again, I guess, but it's just, I don't know, I guess it'll, it'll tell, time will tell once I block the sweater and also when wearing it how I feel about it, and then I'll give a final verdict. But while knitting with it, it's just not, it's not my favorite, I will say. But I'm knitting it on size 8 Chiaogus, my first ones, really enjoying those. I still like um, Addy Turbos and the Haya Hayas better than the Chiaogus, but those are really great and very inexpensive too, needles too. So uh, yeah, size 8 and 5 millimeter needles the red cable which is really flexible as you can see it's a great cable so I'm enjoying that I hope to definitely finish um, the front of the sweater and at least have you know a sleeve started by the next time so we'll see but yeah really loving the sweater cannot wait to wear it it's gonna be great um, acquisitions and things I am loving So, I don't know if you've noticed, but Eric from Sticks Plus Twine and Laura from The Fawn Knits, they're kind of like what got me back into it. But bread baking has been everywhere lately, and I want to try it. I've only made bread a few times, and I can't say that it was particularly successful. It was a focaccia that I made from a, a Kinfolk magazine recipe. So, I um, asked my friends on the Worldwide Facebook what their recommendations were for bread baking books. And for some reason I have a high number of friends that are uh, went to cooking school and both of them recommended this book. This is The Bread Bible by Rose Levy Berenbaum and it's a very comprehensive book. It goes, you know, whole chapters on sourdough which is what I'm really interested in learning how to make and how to make your own starter. Um, again, there's just like tons, like not just sourdough obviously in here, but just tons of different kinds of breads, like sweet breads and savories and rice, like you name it. There's tons. I won't go in here and bore you while I look through the index, but this one they both recommended very highly, and so this is the one I got, and I'm really excited to get started. I want to make, I need to start my starter soon. A lot of people have recommended uh, different places like King Arthur Flower where I can go and buy a starter but I think I can I just want to try out making it myself you know see if that goes okay and if the if the bread doesn't turn out then maybe I'll buy a starter instead of making my own but for now I kind of want to try to do it myself so that's the book the bread bible can't wait to get started on some bread making the next acquisition Last weekend, I think it was, yeah, I went to Brooklyn General with Jenny from Tiny Paper Foxes, Tanya from Knitting Spring, and Kristen from the Yarngasm podcast. We went to Brooklyn General just to hang out and knit a little bit and get some lunch. Recently, I found out that my sister is having a baby boy. She's pregnant. She's due in July, and I have been wanting, there's at least one, I know I'm making her a quilt. That is a non-negotiable, so I still need to buy some fabrics. But she's decided that her nursery is going to be like this woodlands theme, and so I saw these uh, stuffed animals on Pinterest, and this like adorable little fox and little raccoon, I'll insert pictures here so you can see. So I got some fabrics to kind of make my own. So for the fox... I'm just gonna wing it. I haven't, I'm sure there are patterns out there, but I'm sure I can figure out how to make this fox. For the body, I got this fabric. Excuse my really gross nails, by the way, I need to get them repainted. This for the body. Some orange fabric, obviously, for the rest of him. And I already have some black and white and stash for the paws and the detail on the face and stuff like that. And then I saw these two fabrics. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with them yet. I know I want to make the raccoon that I just showed you, and I'm thinking though that this would make a good squirrel fabric. Isn't that cute? I don't know if you could say it was cute, but you know, it will be cute 
once it's a squirrel. I need to think of a brown animal. This one's kind of more tan, so I'm not sure that it's like really on for a squirrel, but I'm not sure how much I care. And then I found this kind of reddish pink fabric. I don't know what this is going to be yet either, but I really liked the fabric, so I thought I would just go ahead and snag it. So yeah, these fabrics are going to be little Woodlands creatures, so I'm going to sew up some creatures for her. And then of course, buy fabric to make the quilt, which I can't wait. And then, the next thing, the next thing I want to talk about is a swap package. So I watched the Herb, Sla Herb Splat Regina podcast uh, with Regina Voth from Germany and she organized a mini skein swap and I was so excited when I was actually paired up with her. I just got my package mailed out shamefully late, like two weeks after it was supposed to be done, but it did get there in the end. So sorry about that, Regina. But she sent me hers and oh my goodness. everything situated here. Okay. So she sent me this really great drawstring bag, which is fantastic because I don't have very many project bags. I bought fabric to make some, but I've been very lazy about making them, so I need to do that. But, so, sent me a bag, and of course the minis. She said most of them were Regia and Opal, I believe, but I did see this... Show them to you, I guess. I can see a definite color trend in the things she sent. There's like lots of blue and tan. Okay. Get them together. Sorry, there's a hair. But amongst the mix, you'll probably recognize this Pond Mini which was uh, from Baron Vola. Very popular because they did a pond along with uh, this particular colorway. So I'm excited to knit that up into my blanket, which I'm doing a log cabin squares blanket, by the way, if you've never seen an episode before. You can watch previous episodes to see what it looks like and download my pattern recipe if you're interested. She also sent these adorable crocheted Kind of ornaments, things. I can make a bunting out of them or something. A few different colors. Chocolate, which of course is already gone except for this one that I didn't know was in here and escaped my attention, so I'm eating this immediately after. And this cute tin. Great Notions tin. So yeah, that's what she sent me. Thank you so much, Regina. I loved everything. The next thing, oh, she, this is also from her notebook. I also want to thank a few podcasters who have sent me um, minis packages. I did a call for minis a while ago because I had literally none because I'm so new to knitting as, you know, only within the past uh, eight months or so now. So this one is from, sorry for the crinkling from Olivia from This Handmade Life. She has a really beautiful blog. I'm not aware if she has a podcast. If she does, I don't think she's told me about it. But um, I know she has a really, really gorgeous Instagram feed and blog called This Handmade Life. And she sent me a ton. Girl, you came through for me. Thank you so much. The second one, this is from Melissa from the Spicy Homemaker podcast. I can't wait to knit with her signature colorway too, the Dolce Vita. Thank you so much, Melissa. She also sent me a bunch of uh, sixlets, which I love. And it's a candy that's not very common, I guess, amongst people my age, but I know them because my mom knows of them. And I love sixlets. I think they're delicious. So she sent me a bunch of sixlets, which is great. And then last but not least, thank you so much, Eric from the Six Plus Twine podcast. He sent me a lovely card. Some tea, of course. Look how cute this is. He sent this too. I'm gonna turn that into something. I don't know what yet. These like little miniatures, maybe little stitch markers, or not stitch markers, progress keepers. 
And then he sent me a bunch of these mini skeins because he had lots left over. And I don't want to pull out too many of them because they're loosely, well, there we go, they're fine. There's some, oh, is that hand spun? I don't know. So yeah, I won't bore you with showing you every single one, but very excited to have some more minis to knit into my blanket. So I am good to go on the minis, you guys. Thank you so much for everybody who has sent me some. Oh, that reminds me, there's more. Angela from Australia. Girl, you went above and beyond. Look at these amazing package of minis. She also sent me a few skeins of some Australian yarn. This is a wool alpaca blend. It's lovely gray and DK. And then this burgundy color, which I love these. These are so, so soft. Thank you so much, Angela. So yeah, I think, I think that is it. Oh, no, it's not, sorry, one more. Sorry, one more. So I know you guys probably aren't even hanging on the edge of your seats for all this stuff, but. Amber from the Yarn Junkie podcast and who's co-hosting the Fine and Dandy Socks Cal with me, she sent me a bunch of minis. These Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans, which I cannot wait to try, but I wanted to. Well, I have tried them before, actually, years ago, but they are dangerous. I wonder what flavors I'm gonna get in there. She also made me this mug rug out of her hand spun. I just feel hand spun is so precious. I can't wait. I'm taking this to work and I am definitely going to use this at work every day. What's her note here say? Some of the first fiber I ever spun on my wheel. Love it. So yeah. That's the thing, you guys. That's that's it for today. That's, I think, all I have for you. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Anything that you've seen that you want more details about that I don't leave uh, below. Again, there is a Ravelry group, the Brooklyn Knit Folk Ravelry group, so feel free to join us. Um, if you want to join in the Fine and Dandy Socks Knit Along, there will be a thread open by the time you see this. So feel free, you know, sign up, let us know if you want to join in. And yeah, I hope you guys have a really great two weeks until I see you next. Um, until then, bye. And sorry that this one was so scattered. I feel like, woo, right now. But next week, hopefully not so crazy. All right, take care, you guys. Bye.